Imagine a group so secretive that its very existence raises eyebrows across intelligence circles. Formed in 1997 by a secret order from the President of Russia, the Zaslan Special Forces Unit became part of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service and later it gained official status as the seventh section within the Internal Security Department of the SVR. Just like the way people hype up American Special Forces, Russia's different Spetsnaz units also get a lot of attention from the public. These units usually play into the glamorization, but Zaslan doesn't. It officially doesn't exist. Made up of about 300 individuals with prior experience in special operations, it became operationally ready in just one year. The unit was acknowledged as fully capable of independently carrying out operations in support of the Foreign Intelligence Service beyond Russian borders. The unit operates independently without the necessity to coordinate its actions with other agencies and services. The notable level of secrecy maintained by this unit is underscored by its direct reporting line to the director of the Foreign Intelligence Service of the Russian Federation. While Vimpel and Alpha Group have achieved fame through films, books, and other media, in contrast, Zaslan doesn't often come up in discussions within the Russian government or media. Every now and then we catch a glimpse, like the Rosebalt interview or a quickly deleted picture on Twitter, by Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Ragozin. In the tweet, he gives thanks to the Zaslan unit officers for keeping things safe in Lebanon and Syria. With about 300 active members spread across different parts of the world, it's been confirmed that Zaslan were active in Iraq, especially during the early days of the invasion. Zaslan's job was to get Russian diplomats out, grab sensitive intel, and recover Russian tech. The unit actively seeks recruits with exceptional proficiency in foreign languages and hard physical training. Members are required to possess in-depth knowledge of mine engineering, firearms, and undergo psychological training. Zaslan members aren't just trained for combat. They also possess the skills of maintenance and technical personnel, including gardeners, plumbers, electricians, and fitters. During their off-duty hours, they handle everyday tasks at embassies and permanent missions. This dual role not only saves on maintenance costs, but also ensures that only authorized personnel are present on secured premises. The unit receives substantial reinforcements from the Sigma Group also known as Group C. These operators were part of the Border Guard Service, with a history of successful missions on the Tajik-Afghan border and in the North Caucasus. This influx occurred after the dissolution of its Moscow Group in 2003, when the Federal Border Guard Service merged with the Federal Security Service. Zaslan also played a role in Syria, ensuring diplomatic security and providing advice to the Syrian armed forces. Moreover, it participated in a mission to rescue Russian nationals in Libya following the downfall of the Gaddafi regime, encountering a near incident with an IED during a convoy operation. Furthermore, Zaslan members were also stationed in Afghanistan, Algeria, and Sudan. In 2003, just before the US-led Iraqi invasion, Two highly secretive Zaslan groups were dispatched to Iraq, with a separate group sent to Iran. Their primary mission was to safeguard the Russian embassy, diplomats, and sensitive materials. Embassy protection had traditionally fallen under the jurisdiction of the Federal Border Service of the FSB, Russia's internal security service. However, being an SVR unit, Zaslan's mandate extends well beyond the conventional responsibilities of embassy security. Zaslan members worked closely with their counterparts in Iraqi intelligence services. Unlike the CIA or MI6, Russian intelligence operatives didn't have to operate in secret. Following the war, Zaslan members were tasked with collecting crucial information to influence the formation of the new Iraqi government. Their mission included identifying and monitoring Russian political parties, groups, and individuals linked to Saddam. Ultimately, they were charged with locating and apprehending Iraqi intelligence officers and agents globally. On June 3, 2006, 
An insurgent group ambushed two Zazlan members and three other embassy employees at a market in Baghdad. One Zazlan member was shot and killed, while the remaining four were captured by the insurgents. About 15 days later, the insurgents demanded the release of Chechen fighters from Russian prisons and the complete withdrawal of Russian forces from Chechnya within 48 hours. Two days later, the second Zaslan member, Oleg Fedosiev, met a tragic fate along with his colleagues, and the event was recorded on camera. Both Zaslan members were posthumously awarded the Order of Courage in 2006. Oleg's body was discovered in 2012 and laid to rest in Moscow. One member of the insurgent group was convicted and sentenced to death in 2010 after videos and pictures of the incident were found during a raid on his house. This marked Zaslan's first public failure, somewhat akin to its CIA counterparts in Benghazi, where insurgents attacked an American embassy and killed the US ambassador along with several GRS operators. In both instances, valuable lessons were learned though at a significant cost. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, we haven't heard anything about Zaslan being involved. No talk, no pictures, nothing at all. Moving to 2023, it's still the same. No one's mentioning them. Maybe it's because Zaslan and the SVR like to keep things secret, unlike the more well-known GRU or FSB. Also, Russian intelligence services are pretty territorial, so the FSB, and especially the GRU, would probably have more power and presence in Ukraine. Zaslan is known as Russia's most secretive unit, but there's still enough info online to get a basic idea, maybe even more than you'd find out about their Western counterparts. Despite Russian officials consistently denying the unit's existence, the widespread use of smartphones and social media persistently reveals information about Zaslan. While it hasn't been talked about much, that's starting to change. But let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you found this content entertaining or helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this one. And thanks for watching.